So we've got our cylinder head uh, completed here. And now it's very important that uh, we follow a couple of steps when we put it together. Number one, with our new valves, you can see we've got our new valves and springs here all set up. We've got our keepers. When you put valve stems into the new guides, or any guides for that matter, it's very important that you lubricate the valve stem. If you don't put lubricant on that valve stem, I like to use just a heavy break-in type oil, what, what's going to happen is that valve could seize up when you start the engine because it'll be dry. And you'll stick a valve open and the piston will hit it and bend the valve and you'll basically uh, blow the engine at that point. So it's real important that we lubricate these stems. Now once we get the valves in, and you can see this head's been completely rebuilt, it's been resurfaced, the seats are cut, brand new valves, it's ready to go. The other thing is the spring installed height. Now the spring installed height is really important because the valve springs actually determine the engine's ability to turn RPMs and how fast the RPMs come up. So what we have to do is I have to duplicate where the spring is going to sit when it's installed on the head. So I take my keeper, my retainer and my valve and I put the keeper on here like this. So what we've basically done is we've duplicated where the spring's going to sit. But before we do that, we want to install a special tool in there. Now, this tool is called a spring installed height gauge. <laughs> Go figure. So this gauge reads just like a micrometer. So we're going to run this down and we're going to put this gauge right on the cylinder head. And then we go ahead and we put our retainer on the valve like so. And we're going to install that retainer right on to this installed height gauge here. We're going to put our keepers in there and basically once we get our keepers in then we run the gauge out until we get a reading on this thing and we make sure that our installed height is where it's supposed to be. Okay. Um, this is important because if the installed height is not tall enough we're going to run into a problem. Now let's say we put our gauge on here and our installed height is too tall. What we're going to do is we're going to take shims and we're actually going to shim underneath this. We're going to take a sh whatever thickness shim we need and we're going to shim underneath the spring to get our installed height correctly. And it's very important that we do this simply to make sure that our installed height is correct. Now the other thing is we need to test our springs. We need to make sure that our springs are exerting the correct amount of pressure when they're on the head. If the springs are collapsed or weak because they're used or they're not the correct springs, we're not going to have the correct opening and closing pressures and the engine's going to run very sluggish. We're going to lose power and performance and I know nobody wants to do that. So one of the things that I do is we have this spring tester here and I like to take my installed height gauge and I will set it for the installed height that this spring is actually going to be set at on the cylinder head. In this case it's one inch eight hundred thousandths. And I just kind of set my tester there and then I put my spring in here. And I know that if I run this down until I just touch my tester, it's going to tell me how much pressure this spring exerts. Now this is a stock spring and it should be between 80 to 100 pounds. We're reading right at 90 pounds on this spring. So that tells me that that is a good valve spring. Um, this is very essential to making sure that the springs are working correctly on the cylinder head. Another thing we do is we take the lift of our camshaft. Now the, the lift of the camshaft on the valve is how far the cam is going to compress that spring when the valve is fully extended. So we take that number and we subtract it from our installed height and then we get a final number. And we take our spring and we compress the spring to where we are checking the spring where it's going to be when the cam fully compresses it. Now this is important simply because if we don't do that, look, get up on that spring there, if we don't do that we won't know whether our spring is going to work with this cam. Now you see these coils here? If we put our, if we figure out our cam lift and we run this down and those coils smash into each other like you see on this one, that means that this spring is not compatible with that cam. If the cam compresses this spring, for, for example, you put in a high performance cam that has higher lift than the springs can handle, 
it's going to compress this spring down until all those coils bunch in, into each other. This is what we call coil bind. If you coil bind the springs, or the springs, in other words, don't have enough uh, clearance to handle the lift of the cam stuff that you put in there, you will blow your engine. <laughs> and so this is a common uh, mistake that amateurs make when they build engines. They take a high performance cam, they just buy some cam that has flames on the box and they think, ooh, high performance. They stick the cam in the motor, they don't pay any attention to the springs, they put the motor together, they fire it up, the springs coil bind and they blow their engine. And they're standing there scratching their head going, what happened? So the springs actually have to be matched to the camshaft. The spring installed height on the head has to be matched to the opening closing pressures like we said. So it's very critical. You can't just take a spring compressor and start slapping cylinder heads together. There's some procedures and some very accurate measuring that must be done in order to make sure this is correct. The other thing is, is we also have to measure installed height or valve stem installed height. Valve stem installed height there's a specification from the spring pad to the tip of the valve. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our depth gauge, we're going to sit on the spring pad, and we're actually going to measure what the spring installed height, tip height of that valve is. There's a specification for any particular cylinder head, and we need to make sure that the distance of the tip of this valve to the spring pad is within specifications. When you do things like cut valve seats and cut valves, do a valve job, so we put seats in here, we've changed all this, we've cut these seats, it can actually change where the valve sits. The valve can sit deeper or, or a little shallower, depending on you know, where the seat ended up. We have a very close tolerance for stem height here, so if we go too tall here, it's gonna throw our rocker arm geometry off, and you're gonna wear the guides out very, very quickly, okay? So it's extremely important that all this stuff is checked. The key to putting together a, a good set of quality performance cylinder heads is number one, good machining practices and also uh, very critical and precise measurements when you're assembling the heads. So I hope this has helped you. I hope this gives you a little insight into what you're gonna be doing when you put your heads together. You guys are gonna be doing all of these checks on your heads. One other thing, one last thing, is we have something called spring free length. Spring free length is basically just the spring sitting there on the bench. We're going to take that and we're going to measure the length of that spring. It has a spec for how tall it should be when it's sitting here. The reason we do that is we go through and we want to check every spring. So if we, get, if we check this spring and this one and this one and we're going along and everything's fine, all of a sudden we get to one spring that's, you know, 50 or 100 thousandths shorter than the rest of them, that tells me that that particular valve spring has collapsed and it's not going to have the right pressure on the cylinder head. If you find one collapsed spring out of a batch of springs, standard procedure is you take all those springs and you throw them in the scrap pile and you start over with a new set of springs because if one spring has collapsed, it stands to reason that the rest of them are not far behind because they were all probably installed on the head at the same time. So once they start collapsing, that's it. Time for a new set of springs. I personally don't put used springs on anything. If I rebuild the heads, I'm getting all new springs, all new valves. That's just what we do here. But it is acceptable to put used springs on a cylinder head, um, especially if the customer's on a budget or you're on a budget, and the springs are within tolerance. That is acceptable. So uh, that's basically it. Hopefully this will help you. And until next time, roar.